is normal. I designed this <laughs> How far up is the ring? In 2018, we began what we called Phase 1. That plan involved buying electric bikes to fund the development of the Bandit. We were able to save up enough money to buy the tools for the Bandit and begin production on our own. The Bandit has been a great success, and it's allowed us to expand our facility and our team. Because of that, we're now able to start Phase 2. Phase 2 of Spark means full production in the United States. Unlike Bandit, the frame will be completely made in the United States. We've spent the past few years designing this frame so that we can make it in-house and have it powder coated locally. We've also tried to design subcomponents like the seat to be made by local upholsters. One of Spark's biggest goals is to expand our market to high school and college age. You'll find that the Javelin will have an option for a DIY kit. That will allow for a STEM program in which high school students can learn how to build the bike, learn how to do all the soldering, all the wiring, all the programming, and even race the bikes against other high schools. We think this will be a great first step to flat track racing. So that's a little insight into the direction that Spark will be taking. So now, let's get into Javelin. This is the Javelin electric motorbike, made by Spark Cycle Works in North Brantford, Connecticut. The Javelin uses a unique exoskeleton design that has a seat that can pivot forward so you can pull the battery out and has additional storage in the back. It features a 4,000 watt motor that's equal to 5 horsepower, the federal regulation for mopeds, that can also be stepped down to a 2 horsepower version for local states. The bike has VINs and is fully street legal to ride and does not require a motorcycle license. You only need a driver's license in the vast majority of states. The bike is highly customizable. If you go to our website, you'll find out that we have a ton of different headlights, different handlebars, different paint schemes, and a ton of accessories that you can choose from. The bike can be purchased in four different ways. The first way is a frame only. This is a painted or unpainted frame that includes a fork and all the body panels. You'll have to supply the motor, and the wheels and the battery to make the bike run. The second version of the bike is our STEM kit. This is designed for high schools and colleges. This kit includes all the electrical connectors, a frame and instructions, pretty much everything you need to build the bike from the ground up. We see a massive market developing for the potential for a high school program where students could learn to build these bikes and race them against other high schools. The third version of the Javelin is called the Tracker. That bike does not have a motorcycle headlight or turn signals or a VIN for legal riding. An example is this bike right here. You can see that this bike uses one of the acrylic panels. We'll have options for yellow, red, and a few other ones. We will include a standard LED light bar so you can see at night. And the bike will include features like our stainless steel front and rear fenders. The fourth version is the standard model of the Javelin or the street bike. And it will come in either black or gray as a base color. And then there are two other tiers of color above that. There's also a variety of other panels and other cosmetic features like these ones. This is a unique rear rack that includes a charging inlet. So you can actually take a power extension cord and plug it right into the bike. There's also a bash guard on the front here. So if you wanna take the bike off-roading, you can protect your controller. And there's also ankle guards here on the side to protect you and your bike off the trail. There's also features like this. Here's the standard rear rack. It extends out and has mounts. The rear light also extends out back so that the cars behind you can see it. And besides our stainless steel side panels and our acrylic panels, we also have a variety of different vinyl wraps. So you can see this is a faux crushed carbon fiber on the side. We can even do it on the top panels. Speaking of top panels, let's go back to the classic bike and take a look at that. 
Taking a closer look at the bike here, you'll see that we have three different toggle switches that light up red. The front one controls the speed mode of the bike. So in the top mode, we will be on a standard street mode. That keeps it within the legal guidelines for a moped class. Then if you put it up to the higher speed mode, now you're gonna unleash the full power of the bike for track mode. In the middle here is a button assignment. So I can switch between two different things. The first thing is a reverse function. If you look at the screen, you'll see that an R appears. That R represents a reverse mode. So the bike is pretty heavy. It's a little over 150 pounds. And by activating the reverse, it just helps you back that bike up. But if I swap to the other mode, that actually activates a cruise control function. So if I'm at high speed, I can simply hit that button. It will lock the speed for me. And that way my wrist is not getting tired out. It deactivates when you squeeze the brake, just like a car. Speaking of brakes, there is full regen braking built into the bike. And so if you go to the Far Driver Control app, you can dial how much regen there is. We've also added the feature for you to be able to disconnect the brake and add a second button so that you can actually do regen braking on that button itself. The third toggle switch down here is a 12 volt output. So. Spark will be developing a bunch of other accessories down the road for the Javelin. Things like external lighting, built-in speakers, and a few other projects that we haven't announced yet. But if you have ideas, you can simply go and remove the side panel of the bike, and there's a plug inside, and you can access that 12 volt right there. While we're on this side of the bike, the seat actually folds forward by hitting a button located underneath. I can hit that, and it pops forward. This gives me access to the inside. I can disconnect my battery, pull it out, and put it on the ground. There's also a massive cavity in the back here. This cavity is big enough to hold your charger or any other gear that you want to carry with you. This is the battery. It's a massive 40 amp hour, 72 volt battery. It has a 100 amp BMS, uses a QS8 connector, and has a standard charging port located above. There's a little screen on top that shows you how much power there is and a simple power switch to turn it off. It's made using a stainless steel enclosure and is very scratch resistant. It can achieve a little over 100 miles in a low power mode or more like 40 to 50 in the higher speed modes. Another interesting feature of the Javelin is a handle. So located on the side right here, there is a grab handle that allows you to pick the bike up. So if you're putting it into a vehicle or trying to get it over a curb, you can grab it right here and lift up. One other interesting feature about the bike are the spools mounted on the swing arm. These spools allow you to use a stand like this to lift up the bike and work on it. Seats are another area for high customization. We include a base level seat by a company made right here in Connecticut, but you can also choose seats from other makers around the United States. The ones that we're featuring right now are made by a company called Tapia. Production times will be between three to six weeks depending on how customized your bike is. For example, certain paint colors will require more time and certain features will require more time. So that's the Javelin. You can go to sparkcycleworks.com today and pre-order yours now. But there was actually one more thing that we wanted to show today besides the Javelin. Five years ago today, Spark opened its doors to the public and launched a variety of e-bikes, including our Project Scorpio. That bike eventually evolved into what you know today as the Bandit. Today, we're excited to let you know that the Bandit is now taking the evolution and is becoming the Brute. The Brute actually shares components from the Javelin, so you'll find motorcycle grade components like the front fork, the brakes, and tires. 
Speaking of brakes, you'll find that we run dual motorcycle brakes. We got them in the front and in the rear. The bike you see right now is a pre-production bike, but the final bike will be very similar to it. One thing that is a little bit different in the final version is the way the seat works. This particular one has a button underneath that opens up and allows you to take the battery out. In the final production version, the seat folds to the side. Speaking of battery, as you can see, just like with Javelin, this is another stainless steel enclosure. It's a 30 amp hour battery, it's 72 volts, and it has 100 amp BMS. The bike can run reliably at 30 to 35 miles an hour, and if you push it to its limit, it will hit about 50 to 60 miles an hour. We're not gearing this bike for high top speed. Instead, we are really pushing it for high torque. We want this bike to be able to climb any hill you throw at it and be able to carry hundreds of pounds in a trailer. We really see this thing being used in the backcountry as an alternative to an ATV or in cities as an alternative way to pull cargo around. By standard, we will ship the bike out with a certified VIN for a moped class. Speaking of which, it does still have pedals. When we think about the Brute and the Javelin, you can kind of take a look at the Bandit and see that we took what we learned from that bike and split it into two different product lines. We took the highly customizable aspects of the Bandit and put it towards the Javelin, and we took the utility elements of the Bandit and put it towards the Brute. The bike will be assembled here in Brantford, just like the Javelin, but will not feature as many customization options. The Brute has actually been in development for nearly two years. It's a hydroformed aluminum frame to keep it lightweight, but the bike still weighs almost 150 pounds. We're excited to let you know that we plan on starting to ship the Brute in June of 2024. That's the Brute. You can go to Spark Cycle Works right now and pre-order yours today.